Dr. Smith actually kind of teed this up a little bit for me with his remarks, is that I think a lot of physicians and a lot of folks in the medical community, uh, they do not really understand um, what self-insurance really is. They understand how self-insurance manifests itself to them, which usually uh, it looks a lot like Blue Cross and Blue Shield, United, Cigna, Aetna, Humana, because there's a lot of insurance companies out there that provide administrative services for self-insured employers. Um, those insurance companies, when they are working uh, on behalf of a self-insured employer, um, the way that it's presented to you is just like another Blue Cross and Blue Shield member, just like another Blue Cross and Blue Shield policyholder. But that's not really what's happening. Um, in, in a truly self-funded environment, um, the employer chooses to sponsor a self-funded health plan. Just as, as Dr. Smith had mentioned, he said, you know, I'm, I'm going to succeed, secede from uh, the, the healthcare mess out there and I'm just gonna take it in house. Um, but like so many employers that decide to do that, you know, he's, he's busy uh, doing, you know, running a practice and he needed somebody to assist him with writing those checks and advising him, especially now in the ACA world, trying to keep, um, keep the plan in compliance the best you can. And so he usually would go out, or an employer in that situation, say, well, I'm self-funded, I'm gonna go ahead and hire a third party administrator to help me run my plan. Well, folks, that's, that's how the Kempton Group operates. Um, we are lucky enough to, to be the third party administrator for Dr. Smith, um, and I absolutely understand that I'm helping him administer his self-funded plan. It's his nickel, it's his risk, and it, the design of what's covered and what's not covered and how rich or how not rich that benefit plan is, is determined by the employer and what fits the needs of their employees the best, because I, correct me if I'm wrong, but you really want happy, healthy employees that show up every day and, and aren't sick and, and all that. That interest is usually very much in alignment with the, the needs and desires of a uh, of a patient. But if Dr. Smith had chosen Blue Cross and Blue Shield to be his third party administrator, they really kind of take control of his plan. <laughs> they dictate to him, he's still on the risk, still his nickel, but they tell him what's covered, what's not covered. He tell, they're gonna tell him what network to use, what the pricing that'll be dished out to the provider community will be. Um, so even though he is technically self-funded, unless he is with an independent third-party administrator, somebody that works in purely a, a clerical uh, role, um, it's really, it doesn't look like self-funding. And I think that's where, um, I think that's where you all were looking at me. Um, I do not take any risk. I do not uh, dip my beak into his, the claim stream that his employees have. I don't have a stake in how much uh, is paid out um, to the medical community. Um, that self-insured employer, the way I look at it, and this was kind of the basis for the Free Market Medical Association that Dr. Smith and I founded, was identifying the buyers and sellers in healthcare. And when Dr. Smith and I met back in, in late 2011, um, you know, he was, he, he knew about self-insurance, he knew about self-funded employers, and I said, you know, my employers are just like you. We're just buyers of healthcare goods and services, and my employees, they do business with PPO networks and all the garbage that's out there, all the layers that are in healthcare, but they don't have to. If we could actually find a, a seller of healthcare goods and services that would be willing to do business in a very open, transparent way, even cash, then we could bring a lot of buyers uh, to your front door. And, and that's what we did after, after Dr. Smith and I kind of had our meeting of the minds there and I didn't, we didn't negotiate pricing at all. His pricing was already on the website. I said, my gosh, it's a great deal. I think my employers would, they need to be aware of this. 
and we simply recommended to our employers that they should modify their benefit plan that whenever they used free market pricing and at that time there was only one free market facility that was selling that was open for business um, but we modified those plan documents to say if you use surgery center of oklahoma and their cash pricing then it'll be a cash transaction in other words the benefit plan provisions the deductibles the co-insurance the pre-certification all that yak yak it evaporated because the employer is the one that owns that plan and they looked to me and I said yeah you know if you buy from from this place the pricing is very fair it's in fact it's better than the pricing that you'll see anywhere else and so a hundred percent of our clients do business with Surgery Center of Oklahoma on a cash basis the employer is the one that's making the funds available but it's not any different to the to the seller of care than if that patient walked through the door with a briefcase full of hundred dollar bills. Um, I think that's important um, when you all look in your communities um, to try to increase for those of y'all that are, that are even that have a cash practice or are contemplating having a cash practice. If you can find and the employer is where you need to talk. That's where you need to start your conversations. If you have a larger employer, say over 100, 150 employees within your community, and you know them socially, talk to them. See if they're, or ask them if they're self-insured. If they're self-insured and they're with United Healthcare, you can tell them all the reasons why that's not a good thing for their patients or for you or the community, et cetera. But if they're self-insured and they do business with somebody like the Kempton Group, you know a family-owned TPA and there's still a few of us out there um, if the TPA works for their client as an administrative only service provider like we do then you ought to be able to talk to your employer in your community and say hey let's get a meeting with the TPA because the TPA works for the client be a great avenue for, for you all um, I'm going to briefly go through, I don't know if how much time I've got left, but I'm going to briefly go through some of the, the pillars of the, of the Free Market Medical Association. Um, actually, very quickly, I'm going to go through, before I go to the pillars, I'm going to talk about some of the, 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 the bad news. I, I think I've told you some of the good news. Um, in our marketplace, you know, there's over 50 uh, facilities like Surgery Center of Oklahoma. Well, none of them are exactly like health, uh, Surgery Center of Oklahoma, but there are about 50 uh, facilities in this region of the country that have emulated Dr. Smith's model and has been based upon just free market competition. Because when we were paying those, uh, those you know, patients, if they went to Surgery Center of Oklahoma, the care was free. That definitely sent a signal to the marketplace. But we, we see, I, I saw just this week, I saw two things that really raised my eyebrows and I wanted to share with AAPS so you all can take these back into your sphere of influence. Um, first off, we were talking with a medical provider um, in Texas that is in rural Texas and they most recently fired um, the PPO network that my employer accessed them through which if I was a normal TPA, I would be telling all those patients, well, you can't go see that clinic anymore because they're out of network. We, took, we take the opposite approach. We say, Whew, finally, the provider's out of network. Now we can go down and talk to them. Now we can talk buyer, seller, um, except for this. This is a medical provider, a clinic, pretty good sized clinic. We went out to talk to them about doing some direct contracting, whether it was whether they were willing to do accept cash or uh, some percentage above above Medicare. Uh, it was it's certainly not a top down deal. It's it's a conversation. And they said, well, we we do some direct agreements out there. I said, well, great. Where are they? Um, you know, what, what do those agreements look like? And and they shared with me. I was like, you know, my gosh, that pricing is is pretty. It's pretty high. It's pretty egregious. It's definitely much higher than some of the other free market providers out there in the area. Um, and said, "Well, we do some direct contracting." I said, "Well, with employers?" And I said, "Well, yeah, we do. We do a lot of direct contracting, and that's the that's the deal that everybody accepts." 
as I started to pry a little bit more, their idea of direct contracting was having a direct agreement with an insurance carrier. And I said, well, what I'm talking to you about is working with First State Bank of Broken Bow. And they have 32 employees. I said, well, what's the difference? I said, oh my gosh, <laughs> how do you mean what's the difference? You know, having a direct relationship with Blue Cross and Blue Shield is not a relationship at all. You should look at, at, at possibly, you know, maybe we can waive deductibles. Maybe we can, we can make things where the transaction is smoother, easier for you if you would be willing to talk with the employer. Just, I, this happened this week. I have not gotten this clinic to see the difference between a self-insured employer and Blue Cross and Blue Shield. I'm going to work on it. Um, the other thing that I heard, which uh, I don't think they're, uh, you all probably, um, this probably won't be news to you all. Um, I've talked to you about buyers, sellers, and facilitators. I'm a facilitator. Right now, in the healthcare marketplace, um, transparency-minded facilitators are coming out of the woodwork. Transparency is a big buzzword out there right now. Um, be very leery of any facilitator that is trying to bring you patients, that they are not violating any of the pillars of the Free Market Medical Association. Those pillars are out on our website. And I think if you would take the time to read those, it will arm you as a seller to see who is actually wanting to come to you as a buyer and who is willing to who is wanting to come to you and just act as a ticket scalper um, so i would encourage you to go out to fmma.org uh, we also have the executive director and the membership director of the fmma are are here megan and mindy and they will hang out a little bit uh, after after our remarks so thank you very much for your time <laughs>